borders with the Native nations prior to their forced removal. These lands continue to carry the stories of these nations and their struggles for survival and identity. As a land grant institution, the University of Illinois has a particular responsibility to acknowledge the peoples of these lands as well as the history of the and lands allowed for the growth and this of this institution for the past 150 years. We are also obligated to reflect on and actively address these histories and roles that this university is going to continue them. This acknowledgement and the centering of Native people is a start as we move forward for the next 150 years. Hello everybody, my name is Sarah Locke. I'm president of the Native American Indigenous Student Organization. On Sunday, February 16th, Illinois Student Government President Vetoed Resolution 03.61, Violations of Human Rights and University Investments. We request that the President and Vice President of ISG do not read the land acknowledgement because of their in apparent inability to take an important stance against contemporary forms of colonization happening worldwide and the university's contribution to colonization. While attempting to appease the university as an institution and other oppressive <coughs> entities, you have made the stance that you do not understand settler colonialism in modern senses. You have shown your inability to make a stance due to your focus on appealing to white fragility at the University of Illinois at urbana Champaign. The vetoing of this resolution brings light double standards that are held by the President and Vice President in their reading of the land acknowledgement. When an individual reads the land acknowledgement, there are a few questions important to ask. Why am I reading this land acknowledgement? What is my end goal in reading this land acknowledgement? What is the impact that this land acknowledgement creates in my own understanding of colonization? And can I understand colonization in modern times? Land acknowledgements are not meant to be sugar-coated. They are meant to talk about important facts like genocide, settler colonialism, ethnic cleansing, and forced removal by colonizers. All of these can be seen as divisive topics. But these are types of topics that need a stance made to them to show right from wrong. Land acknowledgements are not for you all, and I say you all generally, to cobble other individuals white for real law and protect their white toxicity. In land acknowledgements, we focus not only on the history of colonization, current impacts of colonization, and the colonization happening in different countries across the world today. The Native American Indigenous Student Organization sees these similarities between colonization across the globe, and we will not stand for settler colonialism in any part of the world. We will not stand for individuals being complacent in such important times and on such important topics. And if you are complacent, you are siding with the oppressor. Again, we request that the President and Vice President do not read the land acknowledgement from this point forward, and instead select a senator to do it. Thank you for your time, and I hope you take our, our request to heart. Thank you. We will now move into the approval of the minutes. The minutes have been distributed. Is there a motion to approve? Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? Are there any objections? Seeing none, the minutes are approved as they were distributed. For speakers' remarks, I'd like to welcome you all back and uh, thank you for bearing through the entirety of last week's meeting. I am very proud of all the senators who stayed through to the very end of a very long meeting and gave the resolution their due consideration. Um, beyond that, I have no further remarks. Moving on to officer announcements. Are there any officers who'd like to give their announcements? Oh, I apologize. Public comment. Uh, the ISG allocates half an hour of public comment uh, at every meeting. At this time, is there a motion to extend the period for public comment? We have 18 speakers. <coughs> we have 11 speakers. Yes, there was a point. Five. Traditionally, five, but at the beginning of public comment, you can make a motion to limit that time. There's been a motion to limit each speaker's time to three minutes each. Is there a second? Second. Are there any objections? Why? No, we want that. Then we'll proceed into a voice vote. 
actually an eye clicker vote. No. This will be a 10 second eye cl clicker vote because it is a suspension of the normal rules. This will require two thirds majority to pass. A vote of A will be to limit public comment to three minutes per person. A vote of B will be to not limit. A vote of C, D, and E will be abstentions. Starting now. With a vote of 18 and 22 to 2, this motion does not pass. At this time, are there any further motions? Skip it. Senator Mullins. There has been a motion to extend the total time to 55 minutes. Is there a second? Are there any objections? Seeing there's an objection, then we will proceed into a 10 second high clicker vote on this extension. As this is also a suspension of the rules, this will require a two thirds majority to pass. A vote of A will be to extend public comment to 55 minutes. A vote of B will be to not extend it. With a vote of 31 to 11 to 0, this motion passes. Public comment is now made to be 55 minutes. Are there any further motions at this point? <coughs> Seeing none, I will call forward the first speaker, Max Shapiro. You have five minutes. Marcus, could you live stream this for us? Could you just, just hold the phone? Just hold the phone. Um, we need to make this time <laughs> feeling a little bit under the way. Um, just, I just wanted to share a few thoughts about the current situation going on. <clears throat> um, I'm a little repulsed, I'm not going to lie. Um, I think that this whole organization has gone from one of the, the, the most impressive bodies passing legislation on, on mental health awareness and uh, sexual assault prevention. And um, it's kind of just turned into a, a dialogue of toxicity. Um, I know some remarks were made about the president online recently. Um, they took great offense to. Um, and I know the intentions behind them were not necessarily um, offensive. Uh, people certainly perceive them as such. And I think uh, it started to create um, a harmful presence uh, for our president. Uh, I, I, if I were him, if I were in this situation, I would not feel comfortable right now. Um, and to be honest, uh, I, I don't think anybody would. Um, I just think we need to really have a, a more open discussion here. Um, so the, the, the president did something that is within his constitutional authority. I'll, I'll read you this, the clause from the Constitution. It says, um, acts that speak for the student government or the student body as a whole, um, shall not be considered binding until at least one of the criteria are met, and one of these criteria is the president objects to the act, and the act is then approved by the Senate with a two-thirds vote after reconsideration. Um, so the president objects to the act, and uh, it's remarked that this is a result of his Zionist influence. Um, that's not what this is about. Um, the Jewish community felt threatened, and the Jewish community came out in droves last week to tell you how we felt. Um, and, and Connor just so happened to, to listen. And, and, and this, is no, this is not some kind of victory for us. Like, we're not going to parade this around on our feet. Um, the, the job of the president is to make sure that the campus is a safe place. Uh, it's not to, to favor somebody's voice over the other one. And honestly, like, the president has no ill will here. He's not, he's not trying to hurt anybody. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I believe that, that, that what we have here is, is a situation where people are going to get hurt. Um, so I think the point of this is just going forward, um, we need to be really careful with the way we talk about other people. Um, and, and the concerns extend to, to not just the president but to other people here. Um, I, know, I know there's been a denunciation of this, but you know, uh, last week there was somebody who mentioned that a speaker was a Nazi. Um, I was referred to as collaborating with a white nationalist. Um, I, I just, 
I really think that we need to, to bring this down somewhere. And we need to have a conversation on both sides about the way we want to discuss this issue going forward because I think that it is it an issue that needs to be discussed in depth because obviously um, both sides have a lot to say on the matter. Um, but we just we just got to throw it on this right now because um, it's, it's going on. Before somebody gets hurt, I really encourage you to, to think about it. Thank you. The next speaker is Almasa Pala. I want to send the email, but whatever. You have five minutes. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to make this relatively short, but my name is Kamasa Karabic, and I am a senior here at the University of Illinois. Um, freshman year, I stood with Dunya, as you all know her, uh, canvassing, asking people if they cared about human rights abuses. Three years later, we are still having that same discussion with little to no progress. Um, as members of the Illinois student government, you all are in a great position of power to make some really amazing changes at this university. With that being said, if you cannot use your power to stand by or for the so-called groups you stand in solidarity with, especially during their times of need, I really implore you to rethink your position not only as allies, but really think whether or not you are qualified in your positions as senators, vice president, or president and can really represent this university and its student body in its entirety with no exceptions. Thank you. Unfortunately, I'm back here this week to remind you, and to be honest, I'm really exhausted. I'm sure all of us are. Not only am I physically exhausted because of midterm season, but I'm also emotionally exhausted having to tell you all, again, that this resolution is only denying our campus. Jewish students are scared, but they aren't, they aren't the only ones. I'm sure many of you have seen the Facebook campaign that Max just talked about, uh, uh, calling our elective leaders, Connor and Jack, racist and sensitive to the Palestinian narrative. By vetoing this resolution, Connor is not trying to pick sides in any way. He cares about every student, which is why he, which is why when he saw the resolution <coughs> making people on this campus feel unsafe and even threatened, he took action. It saddens me now that he is one of those people experiencing the hate that I hear would occur. This rhetoric was something that 26 students last week uh, warned every one of you about. This is not what the UIUC community should look like. Please support our president's decision to create a united campus and safer environment for the student body at large. Thank you.
I'm here to thank you on behalf of myself and the Jewish community. I know that sometimes doing the right thing can be really hard. But I encourage you and all the other centers here to continue to do the right thing. I stand with you. We all stand with you. Thank you.
Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Merlin. I'm a junior in chemical engineering. I spoke last week, uh, but I still have some more things I want to say. I want to start off by thanking student body president Connor Tricellis for vetoing that horrible resolution that was passed here last Wednesday. Uh, Connor, that took incredible strength and incredible determination, and our community thanks you for that. We really do. Um, you're an incredible ally, and we stand by you. Connor did not veto this because he does not care about human rights. I assure you he does, and I assure you every one of us pro-Israel and Jewish students also care about human rights. We're against this because of all the hate and all the division it caused on this campus. And I also want to thank uh, Student Body Vice President Jeff Langan. Uh, he has been an incredible ally for our community, an incredible help, and we stand by you too, and we thank you for all the help you've given us. Now, I just want to read a post that was put on Facebook last Monday. And I think this post is really emblematic of the general atmosphere that this resolution has created on our campus uh, and all the hate surrounding it. So I'm going to paraphrase this post a little bit. It's quite ironic that on President's Day, I have to denounce UIUC student body president, Connor Josellis, and VP Jack Lingen for being anti-Palestinian racists. Yesterday, they asserted their white male power and privilege and vetoed the resolution. So it goes on to babble a little bit, and then it continues by saying that us Palestinians will not, not let two racist white men silence our voices. Um, I'm sorry, but this is my time to speak. You're more than welcome to come up with public comment later. You have three minutes. Um, so I just read this statement that was put on Facebook by an active member of SJP uh, and a writer of this resolution. And I just want you all to take in what was just said. Your student body president and vice president were called racists, and they, it was said that they had white male privilege, and they used that to assert their dominance over this community. Is that constructive dialogue? Is that really what we want to be hearing in this chamber when we're discussing human rights? Calling people you disagree with racists and talking about their white privilege. Are you serious? This is unacceptable and you guys should not stand for this. In addition, last week, uh, several Jewish students were called horrible things. As you all know, we had a Jewish student called a Nazi. We also had one called a white supremacist. I, I highly encourage you and the members of SJP to find me one Nazi or white supremacist group. Excuse me, I'm speaking. Members of the public, please do not interrupt public comment. Thank you. Find me a white supremacist group that would accept a Jew. Seriously, find, find me one. Find me a Nazi group that would accept a Jew. And I just want to say overall that this kind of behavior the kind of atmosphere that this resolution has caused is unacceptable. Remember how last week we had 30 students come up here, 30 Jewish students, and talk about how this made them feel unsafe. Talk about the division that this caused. Well, this is exactly what we're talking about. This is exactly what we've been talking about last week and exactly what we've been talking about this past year. Now, I would encourage everyone in this resolution or everyone in this chamber to kill this resolution and bury all the hate and division that was brought to this campus. I'd also encourage every senator in this room to stand by your president and your vice president and keep this resolution in the ground. We do not stand for hate, we do not stand for division, and unfortunately, that is what this resolution has brought.
resolution itself is nothing more than a mockery of justice, a thorough of lies, and a slandering of the entire community. And also, I want to state loud and clear that if anyone wants to call another Jewish student a Nazi, do it now. If, any other, if anyone else wants to accuse the Jewish people of genocide, let's have it out. If anyone else wants to deny the Jewish connection to the land of Israel, keep it coming. For I've not learned to wear a kippah, nor Hebrew, nor facing Jerusalem every time we pray, nor any other Jewish custom or tradition in any other land in Israel. I see the chamber is silent now, but I'm calling everyone out for comments that I have received on the quad. Or I've been called a Nazi on the quad by students affiliated with Students for Justice in Palestine. I've been spit up by students affiliated with Students for Justice in Palestine. Berated. And I hear snickering. Yet are my experiences any less invalid than theirs? I want to echo that this is no great victory for the Jewish community. <coughs> a great victory would be our prayer services starting on time, <laughs> instead of having to defend our Jewish identity in the Illinois student government for the last three weeks and all hours of the night. <laughs> a great victory is a Jewish student getting to pick a yarmulke over a hat. In a time of need, it's what the Jewish community faced and continues to face. Because <coughs> for a third week in a row, and a second time this semester, we are forced to defend ourselves for nothing more than being Jews at the University of Illinois. A time, is, a time of need is not putting a stamp of approval on the demonization the libel, and the slander of an entire community. And that's what that resolution was last week. And when it leaves the chamber that we stand in, it does not stand anywhere else. A resolution like 361 wouldn't stand in the Illinois legis legislation, legislative bodies, it wouldn't stand in the United States Congress, it wouldn't stand in the United States Senate, it wouldn't stand in the executive branch, it doesn't stand in nations across the world, yet for some reason it stands in the Illinois student government, and that being even a sliver of validity. Let that speak for itself. And I want to also comment, while I do acknowledge you have one minute. that SJP distance themselves from the member of our community called my sister a Nazi. I want to bring to your attention, where did he learn it? What emboldened him so much to say it at that moment in a public forum like the Illinois student government? It's because it's not the first time that it's happened. He certainly didn't learn it from the Jewish community or any other community on this campus. When we're the Jew we, the Jewish community, are accused by SJP of genocide, of ethnic cleansing, and yes, they say we're Nazis right to our face on the quad. Here's a hint of where he learned it. I want to thank our president and vice president again for your courage <coughs> and being an ally of the Jewish community. When they your time us. has expired.
next speaker is Sophia Sin. Yes, if you ever learn, yeah, you're not allowed to do that. I'm just going to read an, ex an excerpt of a statement written today by the student body president of the University of Michigan at Ann Arbor. Um, so he says, when I arrived at Michigan, I was introduced to the real lived experiences of Palestinian students and an understanding of the legacies of colonialism and settler violence I had not heard before. My education had only consisted of Israeli narratives, and I committed myself to learning new perspectives and being empathetic to Palestinian communities. I feel my deeper understanding of history and multiple narratives now allows me to work as a stronger ally to others to dismantle the systems of oppression that perpetuate the suffering of the Palestinian people. But I also know that I have much more learning yet to do, and I'm committed to continuing that work. As student body president, I hope that the work I have done is representative of my commitment to moving past my former opinions and further representative of my dedication to supporting marginalized communities on campus. But this experience and the recognition of the pain my past language has inflicted on others help me realize I can and must do much more. There is a toxic environment across the country that invalidates Palestinian narratives. I hope to further commit myself to working to uplift those who continue to struggle for their dignity and humanity. I look forward to working with SAFE and Palestinian students on campus to have a crucial conversation about how I can be a partner in promoting an inclusive campus. In my last week as president, I intend to use my role to address how the culture of CFG and campus at large needs to be more responsive to the needs of Palestinian students. This is only one step in an apology that demands action further learning, and a genuine commitment to allyship and the pursuit of justice and collective liberation. Not empty words. Um, so that's what a student body president should say and do, Connor. It didn't, and you know what? Connor's reason about vetoing it, like, oh, it divides our campus. First of all, I don't think it didn't divide our campus. Our campus was already divided. I think rather it shows, it brought the division into light of how our campus is divided, and it's not, oh, divided between Israel and Palestine. No, it's the broader context of this campus is divided between white people and the rest of us on here, and it's not even just with Palestinians. We saw the whole, um, you know, the racism at camps with Mexican students, etc. And honestly, um, Connor, by vetoing a bill that calls for equality and Palestinian human rights, or human rights in general, in general, for marginalized students on this campus, you're complicit in and you're perpetuating the division on this campus. So, thank you. Point of information. The next speaker is Aqua Mukhazi. What's going on here? Let's go back. Oh, Abad is live. Where is he? Hi, guys. My name is Ahlan. I'm president of SGP. So I want to read a statement that we let out um, a few days ago. But before, I just kind of want to <coughs> just speak a little bit. Um, I've seen a lot of just like lies, and I know and misunderstanding was kind of saved in this resolution. Um, I think it's absolutely ridiculous to think that all the crimes that we list in the resolution we believe are done by Jewish people like other people. Um, I thought it would be easily understood that we're criticizing the state, and I think we're allowed to. And this was kind of the most watered down version for us Palestinians to talk about the way that our oppressors are oppressing us. And the fact that we couldn't even do that is just very telling. Um, I understand that there was some divisiveness that came out of this, but how else are we supposed to have these types of conversations? Like honestly, like, I don't understand. We put it in the most simplest ways where we just talked about the basic human rights that Israeli companies are committing against Palestinians. And we couldn't even do that. Um, I think it could have been a really big time to learn and time to educate ourselves, but it was cut short. It passed here, and I commend you all who voted for it. Um, and I think you could have done a lot more, and you stopped a conversation short that was necessary to have been had. Um, I'm going to read the statement that we released. We had 26 organizations sign off on it. We had so many people put so much work into this, and I think it's a really beautiful kind of sum of what happened. Um, so, on Sunday, February 16th, during the Illinois Student Government Cabinet meeting, ISG President Connor Josellis vetoed Resolution 3.61, Violation of Human Rights and University Investments, which calls on UIUC to divest from corporations that engage in human rights abuses. 
Earlier that week, the resolution had passed 20 to 9 to 7 after a series of productive meetings with the president and a six-hour Senate hearing. After listening to hours of public comment by community members and more than 40 student speakers, and despite threats from opponents of the resolution to vote against it, the majority of senators, senators agreed that UIUC should not invest in corporations that contribute to human rights violations around the world. Student presenters devoted considerable attention to Palestine in their presentations, which was largely due to the current relationship between UIUC and corporations invested in the Israeli occupation. However, the wording of the resolution was purposefully broad in scope. Students intended to set precedent with this resolution that would stop UIUC from investing in or partnering with perpetrators of human rights abuses, both in Palestine and elsewhere in the world. Additionally, the actions taken by the cited corporations do not affect only Palestinians, but other oppressed groups globally, as Palestine often serves as the first testing ground for new military technology and equipment that is subsequently utilized against other marginalized people, including brown and black communities in the United States. We understand Joe Salas' veto as part of a larger issue of silencing Palestinian voices and engaging in what has been termed the Palestinian exception to free speech, where the norm of allowing freedom of expression to all speakers is denied as soon as Palestine or Palestinians become the topic of discussion. Joselis and the administration do not have a problem with the resolution itself or its wording. Their real issue with the resolution was the inclusion of Palestine. This red flagging of Palestine-related speech is aided and embedded by pro-Israel groups on college campuses that receive heavy institutional support and funding from outside the university, as well as the Israeli government and its public relations initiatives on US campuses. This veto is but one in a long line of attempts meant to silence criticisms of Israel and further isolate and exclude Palestinians from the sphere of human rights. This resolution was reviewed and discussed with Joe Salas two weeks before it was brought to the Senate, where he expressed support of its content behind closed doors. However, despite the democratic voting process in favor of the resolution, Joe Salas vetoed this resolution on the grounds that it was divisive, alienating, and made students feel unsafe. However, the foundation of Joe Salas' argument rests on the falsehood that criticism of Israel and its human rights abuses constitutes a form of anti-Semitism. He has chosen to contradict his previous comments made earlier this year when he endorsed a resolution who wrote a mass, a mass mail over 50,000 students denouncing the conflation of anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism. Joe Salas in his mass mail said, it is worth distinguishing that criticism of Israel, similar to criticism of any other country, is not anti-Semitic and should not be labeled as such. Criticisms of Israel do not amount to un an unsafe campus climate. The university campuses have always been a center point for popular, for popular protest and social change. In passing this resolution, UIUC would follow in the footsteps of almost 50 other universities across the nation who have acknowledged its legacy and honored the right to freedom of speech for all students, not just those who are deemed acceptable or non-controversial in the status quo. Through years of collaborative effort, college campuses have played a pivotal role in, in shifting the narrative on Palestine. This work has allowed us, as Palestinians, to understand our cause as part of a larger struggle for liberation from all forms of oppression. Joe Salas has used this veto to silence Palestinian students and their allies on campus and stand by corporations that surveil, discriminate against, and murder the families and friends of Palestinian students at UIUC around, and around the world. The UIUC community deserves and voted for better. As students, we demand a reversal of this veto and the unequivocal renewal of support for divestment. I'm going to read the... Uh, organization that signed off on this. So SJP UIUC, um, SJP Chicago, National SJP, U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights, Palestinian <coughs> Youth Movement, Native American Indigenous Student Organization, Fossil Free UIUC, Students for Environmental Concerns, yeah, Students he's Against he's Sexual Assault, Jewish Voice for Peace Campaigner Band, Jewish Voice for Peace Chicago, National Jewish Voice for Peace, Asian Peace Pacific American Coalition, American Muslims for Palestine Chicago, Party for Socialism and Liberation, Movimiento Estudiante, Muslim Student Association, Illini Democrats, Underrepresented Muslims and Minority Advocates, Black United Front, Illinois Coalition Assisting Undocumented Student Education, Young Democratic Socialists of America, Arab Student Association, Black Students for Revolution, Pakistani Student Association, Graduate, Graduate Employees Organization. I just think that there was a lot of good that could be done with this resolution. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? This is good. This is very good. The next speaker is Molly Cream.
You've been texting him. So I'm going to be looking over here because I think they already know who I'm talking to. So on Sunday, <coughs> on Sunday after Connor announced his veto, he shook hands with all the pro-Israel students while Palestinian students walked out of there crying because they felt like they didn't have a chance at voicing their own humanity. The same people last week who are mad over the Nazi comment which was a person that has nothing to do with SJP. I've never seen that man in my life. And he apologized because we, we found him and we demanded that he apologize under the post. The same people that are mad at that were the same people who laughed when I shared personal stories under Israeli occupation. And a lot of you coming here is talking about anti-Semitism. Why are you so focused on yourself? This resolution was not about you. This resolution was about us Palestinians. Stop being so self-centered and let us have our voice. When you conflate Israel and Judaism, when Israel kills 1,000 Palestinians, do you want us to say that Jewish people killed 1,000 Palestinians? How dumb does that sound? That's exactly how dumb it sounds when people conflate Judaism with Israel, a freaking state. Not one person tonight came up and said that they care about Palestinian human rights. Not one person. And that just shows you how silent we feel on this campus. How silent we feel after that veto. It's not just a veto to you, it's a political decision. For us, it's our humanity on the line. You knew what I sacrificed to be able to offer a resolution. You knew the rape threats, the death threats that I was getting. You knew. And you knew the backlash that we get as Palestinians. And you still made that decision. No, it's not divisive. My humanity is not divisive. It's not controversial. You are not allowed to tone police me. I wish you read my entire Facebook post. I do not care. I do not regret one thing I said about you two. I do not. I wish I said more. I wish you got more. I don't feel bad for you. I feel bad for the Palestinians that suffer under occupation because of those companies. I feel bad for the Palestinians on this campus who feel unsafe because of you too. You might think that I'm coming from a place of anger and hate, but anger and hate come from the same place that love comes from. I might sound angry, but, and I might sound hateful, but it's because I love my people. I love my humanity. I hate having to prove that. I hate having to come up to ISG every freaking Wednesday and try to tell all of you my emotional stories under occupation for people to laugh at me, for people to not care to veto my rights. Because that is a cause I truly care about. But when you come over 
here and try to attack my own cause and try to diminish my own voice and make it about you, that's where you go wrong. We met with you out of respect. You told us we vetoed, we didn't meet with you. I listened to you, I trusted you. And I know I feel really unsafe knowing that you two in those seats are supposed to represent me as part of the student body. We will be passing that bus with or without the bus. <laughs>
in accordance with the Constitution um, and other things. I'll be appointing uh, justice to the judiciary next week. Um, this comes to my attention that in the Constitution, um, the Senate can nominate um, these candidates for that position. Um, I will be interviewing the applicants online on Thursday. However, at this time, I will ask for nominations from the Senate for the justice vacancy. Are there any? That is false. The Senate cannot nominate justices from the floor. How is that nomination process work? The Senate cannot nominate justices from the floor. It's simply your application process. I'm sure you can clarify with the Chief Justice. I did. <laughs> um, <laughs> in addition, applications for Big Town Hill will be coming out. Um, and also, I believe the elections deadline has passed, but I was going to encourage everyone to continue applying. New religious holidays. As if the current Prime Minister of India did not see an oversee a pogrom of Muslims in Gujarat during his time as Chief Minister. As if individual acts of terror are generalizable to any people, let alone one like Islam with, with its over one billion adherents. As if to be Muslim is to necessarily be violent to all non-Muslims. Or the several times that our Palestinian members of the resolution's authors were linked to Hamas and Palestinian leadership, despite an easily searchable history of being critical of both entities. But more often, it was couched in the same kind of rhetoric that got the Patriot Act passed and subsequently renewed by various presidential administrations. Rhetoric about national security, rhetoric that devalues Muslim lives in protest in favor of border enforcement and settler nation states, rhetoric that casts Islam as non normative and its adherents' rights as allowances to, the threat of, to a threat of the global north. It was rhetoric about safety and security of maintaining a status quo. Of course, the moment we acknowledge that the status quo constitutes violence to various underclasses, or worse, excludes them from its worldview entirely, we should see this rhetoric for what it is. A rather naked nationalism that tells Muslim people their existence is a threat to the rest of their nation's safety and security. This body and the conversations that it has hosted has given at least some time to address Zionism, Israeli nationalism, and settler colonialism. The same respect or opportunity has not been given to the Islam and Islamophobia, and you all need to take 10 seconds now to reckon with it and reflect on what you can do to challenge it the next time it comes up. Because it will. Thing the third. Finally, I wanted to speak a little bit to the argument tactics used last week, because some of them were nothing short of despicable. Before I get started, I I want to be clear that I mean none of this as a shot at President, Gis President Gisellus, whose job I understand and appreciate to be significantly different than a senator's or a member of the public's. I may not agree with his decision, and there will be a time for explanation later. I have issues, significant issues with his decision, but they are not all problems. I know that many of you have done or are doing debate, model UN, and other public speaking extracurriculars, so this may be review, but indulge me here, and allow me to define something called the golden mean fallacy. The idea that the truth is a compromise between two opposite and necessarily equal positions, that if one side proposes that the earth is a sphere and the other proposes it is, a, it is flat, the truth must be that the earth is a dome. It is the coward's way of defending an indefensible position, saying that if there is disagreement, it must be justified and have value, or, in the words we heard over and over again last week, that if a position causes divisiveness, it must be incorrect regardless of the nature of this, of this divisiveness. It should not be necessary for me to explain why this is wrong and dangerous, because movements for rights and justice throughout history have faced tremendous opposition, <laughs> to which the golden mean response would have been a world in which minorities count as half, maybe three-fifths, of people. We may not be in the midst of the civil rights era, but I doubt anybody in this room would claim that fights for race Gender, sexuality, ability, nationality, age, etc. Justice are over. And just as it was then, there is no moral equivalency between these fights. And an argument that asks those of us fighting for justice to consider that maybe an incomplete version of justice is all we really need, that tells us that the condition of fighting for justice is worse than the condition of justice, or the condition of injustice, that quote, dialogue can replace activism is simply put repugnant. Last week's was a resolution on our tuition dollars being used to fund human rights abuses, a statement of fear that several students on this campus were unknowingly paying for the bullet they might find in a family member's corpse. 
This self-evidently is not a position to compromise on, and that we were asked, numerous times, to consider that this fear should be forgotten because it caused agitation is, once again, reprehensible. Anybody who made this argument or supported it through vote or proposed amendment should be ashamed. I'll leave you with this. Audre Lorde told us, in a seminal speech turned essay that I recommend you all read in full, that the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. I quote, they may temporarily allow, they may allow us temporarily to beat him at his own game, but they will never allow us to bring about genuine change. And this fact is only threatening to those who still define the master's house as their only source of support. I don't know about dismantling, but I have seen when an underclass, as opposed to the intersectional underclass, gets a hold of those master's tools. The master's house is invariably replicated in miniature. Constructing a level of power for them over certain others, for a people who are in the grand scheme of things still minoritized. I have seen it in the model minority in this nation and other sites of Asian and South Asian diaspora. I have seen it in the sports world, and I saw it again and again last week. As we as a body continue to try and advance the interests of minority groups on this campus, please remember this. Thank you. <laughs> English majors must speak in teams of three because I also have three points to make tonight. And this is mostly directed at these, this first part at our senators. <laughs> My three points for you all tonight is to learn your jobs, is to learn respect, and to learn some bravery. Because last week we dealt with an issue that is hard, and I am proud of the way this Senate voted on the issue before them because we prioritize the safety and the advancement of groups on this campus as is necessary. However, I am going to note my deep disappointment in how members and certain senators in this body conducted themselves. I understand the passion that was surrounded last week, and that does not excuse the behavior that was witnessed. I initially need to note the time that was wasted due to petty, unnecessary questions of parliamentary procedure and amendments. Those were not necessary. We were here for five hours, and by my estimation, we could have been here at least an hour and a half earlier if we had, if you senators had taken the time that is necessary for your jobs to understand what your job entails. To those who are new senators, and that was your first meeting, you're excused from the school day for the time being. But you better freaking learn what Robert's Rules is very quickly, because I don't want to come up here again. Because I would like to not have to sit here and be Wow, these people don't know how amendment procedures work. This is very simple processing that is, by the way, now if you will attend committees, you will learn very quickly how parliamentary procedure works. That will be new for some of you, because I would like to suggest you join the CTA because we use Carly Pro fairly um, efficiently. <clears throat> but the entire five hours I witnessed from all levels had a certain level of disrespect that I have never seen witnessed in a student body meeting like this. And to those senators who you, you bring your constituents, it is your duty and your job to inform them on how we do things, which is with respect. On both sides, I was sitting in the back and behind me, to the sides of me, I heard laughter during people's moments and their stories of trauma, of emotional outpouring. And I heard laughter. We heard comments that are not repeatable and should never have been said. But those are your constituents. You need to teach them how to we act here. The ISG is supposed to be the epitome of student leadership. We are supposed to be the epitome of respect. And I saw very little of that from this body last week. To certain senators, I did see that. And I was outrageously proud of those who attempted to maintain a certain level of decorum. And to those individuals, I thank you. But to certain members, I would like to say that was uncalled for, and you should know better. As for the resolution in question, I have some comments for that as well. And this is where my comment of learning some bravery is less directed at the Senate because you had some, and we passed that bill. But to the executive and to the president, I am going to note my deep disappointment in the decision to veto this resolution. And I would like to note the arguments that I've heard tonight 
and I have heard throughout the last few days that the president has been under pressure, that the president had a difficult decision to make, and that this was something very emotional. It was emotional for the students, all involved. And I'm going to note that if the president did not wish to make such difficult decisions, he need not have run for this position. The nature of this job in ISG, the nature of the, the, the role of the president, the nature of the role of senators, is to listen to our constituents and their grievances, and to listen to them for what they need from us. This body listened to our constituents. We heard hours of public comment, but we also listened to our college constituents, of which each senator represents. We listened to our campus, and we voted majority to pass this resolution. The senators here listened to the campus that is before them, and they, they responded accordingly. The president did not. <laughs> And as such, to the arguments that we should take pity on the president and feel some empathy for the hard decisions he's had to make, I would like to note that I feel more pity and empathy for both groups and for the groups that have not been heard and for the, group, the groups who have been silenced based on this veto. I do not feel pity and I do not feel empathy for the president's decision and I condemn this veto entirely. <laughs> tired and tired and tired of meetings like the ones we've had. I mean, I'm, they're not, they're by no means fun. It's okay to take a break if you need to. I want to say that. Focus on yourself and your team and your own health. But also remember that you are a senator. You have power. You can do great things with that, with the people around you. So, going forward, we need to make sure that if we're in this, and if we're committed, that we use our power to support the communities that need it, and to support initiatives like the resolution for the children and um, uh, university documents for investment in the future. It's fun to save you all. Yes. Wrap it up. I, 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 uh, I support you. Please talk to me if you want to talk to me as a friend. If you need to about anything here, or whatever that's worth. But also, know why you're here. You have power. You need to use it. So I'm, I'm going to be pretty brief, but um, I'm just speaking uh, non-political right now, so you guys can breathe a little bit. But um, uh, I'm here to talk about um, accountability for our, for our uh, organization. 
Um, one thing that I would really like to focus on is um, the true lack, I mean, really lack of proper parliamentary procedure in a lot of, um, in a lot of cases, in, in particular, um, the, both sides, audience members of both sides, um, were disruptive and continually disruptive. Um, the student who exclaimed that the Jewish student speaking up here is a Nazi should have been brought out of the room um, at that moment. Um, furthermore, there were four speakers whose time was um, completely cut um, from its full allotted amount. Uh, today, there was a speaker who spoke a minute, a minute and 23 seconds over. Um, th these, are, these are things that I just want to clarify. When I, when I say point of order, whenever I say um, point of information, how much time left, um, these are things that I'm trying to really hold bias from our government situation, and I, and I want to promote some accountability on that side. Um, so I just want to announce that to the Senate. Um, that's all I got. Check in with the computer, and then you have to go to the other person to hand you the eye clicker. And then after you get the eye clicker, write down your name and the eye clicker. In addition, if you get up um, from your seat, you have to take the eye clicker with you. And if you leave the room, you're supposed to give it to us, and then come get it when you come back in. Uh, so we can follow up for the next few meetings. That'd be great. Society of Black Engineers, um, which are supposed to be the final, um, the final organization. I'm trying to get up a panel, and I thought that went through well. So fingers crossed for that. Um, either way, we have um, we've had some trouble with our um, flyers, and I've, I've gotten um, contact um, emails <coughs> from people who were not exactly sure how this event was going to look because we've had to change a couple of things on the flyers numerous times. Um, so um, um, I've had the we have the permanent flyer which we'll be using now. Um, it's up on our Facebook on the event page, um, which is 100 yards off. Um, and yeah, I think um, that's it. It's about this is supposed to be a fun panel, a great um, informational panel, also to learn a lot about um, African Americans and Black people in general and our and our all advancements towards um, the society um, in general, the historical, social, and historical, social, and cultural context of African Americans and Black people, and um, what it means to belong to a certain process of the community. So I'm um, hoping to see all of you there, and it's going to be great fun. And I also want to say, I want, I want to express my deep gratitude to um, Ali Mariza. Um, Ali has been a great help in this panel. He's been the one handling all the logistics. Um, I couldn't have done this on my own. So I just wanted to um, say his work does not go unrecognized. I really thank you so much, Ali. Um, I know there's a lot going on right now, but you've been really helpful, and I hope to work with you a lot more in the future. Well, you were not graduated, but come back to grad school. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so thank you so much, and I uh, once again, it's really great to see all of you here. And um, thank you guys so much. Have a great day. <laughs> Why did I
action? Why civics? Why marches? And why? And, and so forth. Isn't negotiation a better path? You are exactly right in your call for negotiation. Indeed, this is the purpose of direct action. Nonviolent direct action seeks to cre create a crisis, create a crisis and establish creative tension that is a community that is uh, constantly refused to negotiate is forced to confront the issue. It seeks to dramatize the issue that is no longer to no longer be ignored. I just refer to the creation of tension as a part of the work of the nonviolent resistor. This may sound rather shocking, but I must confess that I'm not afraid of the word tension. Furthermore, I'm gravely disappointed with the white moderate. Are these my words? Are these words I wrote? Well, white liberal, white liberals love MLK. So we're gonna throw back at them and we're gonna say, yeah, all of those words, all of those words about bringing forth tension to create progress, those are MLK's words, those are not mine. Continuing, honestly, spending how many countless hours of you all in the same room, a lot of familiar faces, and frankly, a lot of familiar faces since I've been here, four years. And you know what? I'm tired of dialogue. Dialogue is no, it's no substitution for progress. How much dialogue are we gonna have and just sit around and do nothing? I'm disinterested. Don't waste my time. I will be submitting an amicus brief uh, briefly to uh, Chief Justice Condo um, for a, uh, a personal irregularity um, with my I for her IRD email address about it. Um, I also want to say, um, so this extends to the whole room, but it is very directed at senators. Um, we have this constant discussion about divisive or like divisiveness, and like I know in the past. Um, We've talked about like group chats and people like, you know, working together on different projects and not letting each other know about it. And group chats, group chat, group chats, something that comes up very often. And I just have to say, like, number one, it's politics. A lot of what we call divisiveness is just gaslighting, frankly. And I think there's a lot of people in this room that need to grow a thicker skin around it. So I just want to say to people who, especially the last few weeks, have been coming up here and saying like, oh, like, there's so much, like, ISG is so divided. Like, are you the same people who are going to committees, reaching out with the other groups? Are you putting in the effort? Are you putting in the effort all the time? Because honestly, it's not the people I see throwing stones who are putting in the effort day in and day out. So thank you. Thank you. I don't want dialogue. Hello, everyone. Okay, so there's a lot to say, but um, thankfully a bunch of other senators came up and made comments, so thank you all for making their comments. Decrease the amount of things I have to say. Um, so, one of the main things that I wanted to talk about um, that actually Senator Kosmopolis came up um, to touch on, I want to expand on that. Um, there were some points made in public comment um, about how we, as an ISG, um, Illinois student government, um, don't focus on things and issues like mental illness and sexual assault. Um, and I quite frankly think that that's absolutely inappropriate and discredits all the work that ISG members, every ISG member um, here has been doing. Um, we've been at it for how many years now? For actually most of us, how many years now? Um, Blueprint is about us, the people versus multi-million dollar companies. Companies that they think can get away with facilitating human rights violations because they have near unlimited resources and influence. We know that this is wrong and we are here today to speak against our tuition dollars being funneled to these corporations whose values stand in stark contract, contrast to our own. Raytheon manufactures bombs that murder civilians in countries around the world. Their profits come from taking innocent lives. Lives that are represented by Yemeni students on our campus, 
by Palestinian students on our campus, Central American students, Black students, and even Russian students. Every dollar of our school's money that goes to Raytheon is a direct uh, disrespect to students with connections to those nations. Raytheon commits human rights violations. Elvis has saw manufactured surveillance systems used to criminalize and brutalize migrants on the U.S. southern uh, the U.S.'s southern border and across Mexico, Central, and South America. Elvis systems also make drugs. I don't think I have to tell you the atrocities committed with that technology, nor remind you of the countless civilian lives drones have taken since the Obama presidency. Elvis system commits human rights violations. Northrop Grumman also builds deadly missiles, creates surveillance technology, and utilizes biometric data to police over 500 million people. Bombs, mass surveillance, and horrific human rights violations have been a hallmark of this company since the Bush administration and before. And yet the University of Illinois shamefully invests money in this company. We need to defend human dignity by challenging corporate power. Corporate power that profits off of violating human rights and international law. We must hold these companies accountable. This resolution uses three company, companies as examples in order to set a precedent for future divestment from the many more companies that are complicit in human rights abuses. I ask today that we recognize that as University of Illinois students, we are united against these companies and against human rights abuses. By voting yes, we are letting the administration know that we do not agree with where they're putting our tuition money. Stand with me and speak out against our money directly funding companies that have killed and terrorized millions. Thank you. Extend speaking time for a single member of the public. 
Uh, motion to extend speaking time. How, uh, sorry, before that, point of information. How many speakers do we have left on the list? Uh, <laughs> motion to extend uh, time for by 70 minutes to hear all speakers left on the list. A motion by 70 minutes. Two, 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 Clarify how much time. Two, two or seventy minutes, yes. Yeah. Uh, to allow the full a lot, a lot of uh, lists. So add thirty-five minutes to the clock. We are currently at thirty-five minutes. Yes. A motion has been made to extend time by thirty-five minutes. Is there a second? Are there any objections? Seeing none, time has been extended to 70 minutes. The next speaker is Blake Schellert. Thank you. 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 You have five minutes. This past winter break, I traveled with the Yeast College of Business to Israel for a short term study abroad trip studying entrepreneurship. Israel is second to Silicon Valley in their startup prevalence in the world. Many businesses within the world today were founded in Israel. This includes Mobileye, which is the backup camera and the safety on a car, Waze, the GPS app that many of you know, a pill with a camera attached to take a closer look to help help you and make life better within someone's body, Genie, a water filtration food system to provide clean water to underprivileged and developing nations, Orcam, glasses to assist those with vision impairments. <laughs> and many, many more innovations to help the lives of citizens all over the world. These were all founded by Israeli individuals in Israel. Israel is a nation that is changing the world. SodaStream, one of the companies my group was lucky enough to visit, is performing large measures to incorporate the Palestinian and Israeli populations into one cohesive working unit. The current SodaStream factory in particular includes benefits to both parties. There are prayer rooms for all religions, and there are working permits for the Palestinians to travel into the area, and their transportation is provided. SodaStream, for instance, is taking the first step to dismantling conflict in the workplace in Israel today. Passing this bill would prevent potential life-changing alterations, educational experiences for students of myself and other non-religious students in the College of Business, and would discourage new startups to come to the United States. The consequence of this resolution and any other potential BDS resolution would potentially lead to hatred and bigotry on this campus. Religious, religion aside, the passage of this bill would do more harm than good for the entire community and beyond. Voting for BDS for this resolution is precisely voting against peace in harmony and not in the Palestinian best interest. So please vote no. The next speaker is Edelman. I have a speech. Nathan. You have been called. I have a speech. Is that I think you said that. No, I didn't. I just thought I'm going to go up there and I think the clear one. I mean, I can echo everything, everybody, what everyone's saying. But yeah, I'm just going to want to go up there and make an impact. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I will. Uh, I will. 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 I will
Robbie is the first planned city in the West Bank, made by Palestinians for Palestinians. This past summer, I had the opportunity to actually visit Rawabi. It's a beautiful modern city with high built with high built high rises. Business Insider describes this as the Marshall Plan of Palestinian success. This city was a miraculous example of what the Palestinian people can accomplish. I'm telling you about the city because I believe hate construction is far from progress. If this resolution is about human rights, then the location of these companies is irrelevant. If this resolution is about the Palestinian struggle, then why would divestment from Israel help when Rawabi is a shining example of how of what investment in the Palestinians can accomplish? As the representatives of this progressive institution, we should be focused on investing in progress towards the future, towards a future Palestinian state, rather than trying to destroy the homeland for the Jewish people. Rather than focusing on divesting, I urge you to reconsider and think about investing in progress. If we care about inclusivity and dialogue, we need to consider making a positive impact, not a negative one. Have you even begun to consider the consequences of divesting? There is so much more to think about. This, this issue is so complex. Students clearly care about human rights on this campus, and they care about doing good for the student body at large. I'm asking you to represent the student body at large, to factor in all of our wishes, and to draft a resolution that will make a positive impact and will garner, that will garner support from the student body. If you believe in progress, you should not divest. In this. You, should not, you should not vote for this destructive resolution. Thank you. struggled with for a long time now is the balance of my identity. I was born in Palestine, but I came to America when I was seven years old. My family moved here because of the current genocide that is happening in Palestine. And they came here as a promise of life that America symbolizes. And even though I was on that plane 12 years ago, sometimes it still feels like I'm there, stuck in the middle. I'm too Palestinian for America, and I'm too American for Palestine. And I know I'm not the only one struggling with this. Anyone here who comes from a different ethnic background that is here today knows what I'm talking about. And that's who this bill caters to. Everyone here who is marginalized and everyone whose human rights have been stripped from them. Everyone whose family came to America in order to build a better life for themselves, only to find out it is America who's funding those who weren't back in their countries. I can't even think of the number of times I sat in my room, scrolling through different news sources, or even my own Facebook page, seeing pictures of children getting put into military trucks, seeing pictures of kids standing around their destroyed homes, seeing pictures of children in memoriam because they have died. And I get so upset, but here I am, standing in Urbana Champaign, standing in Illinois, standing in the United States of America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, that's funding these weapons that are detaining and killing and destroying these kids' lives. I live in one of the most powerful countries in the world, and yet I sit here and I look at all these names and these numbers, and I feel powerless. And I know that's how a lot of U of I marginalized groups here feel today, powerless. To reiterate, this bill targets everyone whose human rights have been violated. Palestine included, Mexico included, and every single country that faces against a colonizing force included. This bill is so small, and yet it gives power not just to a sophomore. It gives power to our families at home, and most importantly, 
It gives power to the disassociation we are trying to gain from these companies. The same companies that are funding these disgusting campaigns that are killing our cousins, our neighbors, our communities, and force us to come to America in the first place. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mel Lamson. I'm a junior studying electrical engineering. I'm also a leader in the Jewish community, having served on both the Lai Chabad and Lai Boros student boards. I'm here to discuss my concerns and the concerns of the Jewish community with Resolution 361 Violations of Human Rights and University Investments. This resolution worries me because it represents itself as a BDS resolution without explicitly stating it is. Every company mentioned in the bill is firstly connected to Israel, clearly signaling out Israel for investment. In addition, the sponsors of the bill are members of SJP, an organization who openly support BDS. And the authors and all the speakers who have spoken today, none of them have refused to disassociate this bill from BDS. Just yesterday, SJP and UIUC sent an email urging people to come to today's meeting in the name of UIUC to divest. A Facebook page whose logo is a picture of Israel. It is clear that this bill was written as another attempt to specifically divest from Israel. But why is BDS problematic? Why is it worrying me and other Jews on campus? BDS and not be the peace between Palestinians and Israelis. Why is BDS anti-Semitic? What's wrong with calling out human rights violations in a specific country? Well, it only targets Israel, a country that is unique only in the facts is the only Jewish state. Israel ranks the top 60 countries out of 160 on the Personal Freedom and Happy Planet Index. Israel has a 78 freedom score, which is seven times higher than Gaza, three times higher than the West Bank, but it is in the top 80 of 210 countries and territories. That means there are between 100 and 130 countries which are greater violations of human rights, yet Israel is singled out. Israel is not even mentioned in the Human Rights Watch's World Report for 2019, nor in CNBC's or the Guardian's list of top human rights offenders none of whom were mentioned in this bill. The singing out of Israel therefore represents itself as an attack simply against Jews. Furthermore, BDS will not help end the conflict. I do believe in a peaceful solution where there will be no further casualties for both Palestinians and Israelis. That's not what BDS supporters want. BDS is meant to delegitimize and demonize Israel, rejecting a two-state solution and Israel's right to exist at all. These are not just my words. These are the words of the anti defamation League one of the biggest anti-Semitism watchdogs in the world. Famous anti-Semites like Jeremy Corbyn and Louis Farrakhan have supported BDS, while politicians from across the political spectrum have come out against it. Barack Obama passed an anti-BS bill in 2015, and Hillary Clinton publicly, publicly called BDS alarming, saying it bullied students on college campuses. Even Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas and Palestinian activist Norman Finkelstein have said they are against the movement. An Israeli company called Sozkin had to fire 500 Palestinian workers when it was forced to shut down the factory due to pressure from BDS. In response, the BDS coordinator in Ramallah said it was a price that needed to be paid. BDS is not in the best interest of Israelis or Palestinians. But most importantly, I am worried about the fact that BDS passing will have on, the, on this campus. There are around 3 to 4,000 Jews on this campus, and I personally have generally found the campus to be friendly to Jews. However, BDS is dangerous to Jewish college students. According to the American Jewish Committee survey, over 80% of Jews view BDS as anti-Semitic. Another study by the Amta Initiative found that the passing of BDS bills increases anti-Semitic incidents on campuses exponentially. BDS makes current and prospective students feel unsafe. 
No U of I ranks in Forward's top 15 colleges for Jewish life. It ranks 57th overall in rankings for the best college for Jews. Its ranking plummets due to its safety score, which is only 2 out of 11. The Algemeyer went further, ranked the University of Illinois the 19th worst school for Jews. The ranking was attributed to several anti Semitic incidents, including the fact that a BS referendum was being attempted on campus. Students who see these rankings will feel uncomfortable attending our school, and that is unacceptable. I personally have witnessed prospective Jewish students on Facebook saying that they are reconsidering their desire to come to our university because of legislation in the Senate. Furthermore, there have been two referendums on this topic in the past couple years, and both times the resolution did not pass. I do not believe that ISG, who is supposed to represent the student body, to go against what the student have, students have already expressed as their views. In conclusion, I want Jewish students to feel safe and proud on this campus. I want the Jewish community to grow and protective students to feel welcome. I'm therefore requesting that the student senate please listen to the voice of the Jewish community that have all spoken here today and not accept the bill which singles out Israel as the man for the best man. A bill specifically singling out Israel is anti-Semitic and would be a great shame on this senate we are going to ignore the voices of the Jewish community and this bill will pass. Thank you for your time. Next speaker is Alan. Oh, oh, it's really our Hebrew. Oh my god, this guy is crazy. He's the one who asked us to sign. He's the one who asked us to sign. You're part of my time to another speaker, is that correct? No, you are a member of the public and therefore you cannot yield your time. Thank you for clarifying. I'm not a student. So my name is Alan Axelrod. I am a farming stop. I have helped create a Jewish cultural group at Oklahoma State University to make sure that that was a welcome university for Jewish people. Unfortunately, I didn't get to decide what the name of that group was. Uh, they chose Jew Crew of LSU. I apologize. There are three universities that I know about. Oregon State University, Ohio State University, Oklahoma State University, but they all want that and whatever. Earlier today, I was circulating into the war petitions, asking folks to stand in solidarity against the war with Iran. I understand that there are grievances with Iran. Thank you still for signing those petitions and engaging respectfully and sincerely, even though you were in opposition with both myself on this particular issue and many others in this room. I share the concern that was expressed about white supremacy and its proximity to this initiative and process. See, I was minding my own business when Rabbi Dovid Simon Bars invited me to a chat with white supremacist Turning Point member Blair Nelson and earlier speaker Max Shapiro. It's been a while. <laughs> they were collaborating with each other. White supremacists and Zionists. I told Eric Cohen about this. I was dismayed about this. There were remarks about people not being real Jews. There were additional speakers in this room. I recognized them that were in the chat. Fortunately, my memory's not great. I'll have to review the screenshot later to get your names. <laughs> Members of the public, please. So when we're talking about the proximity of white supremacy on this issue, it's in this room and in opposition to this measure. With that being acknowledged, I therefore, both from my own moral compass and the fact that there are plenty of other corporations and initiatives to invest in that I recommend passing this resolution as written. Thank you. student here in computer science. Um, I would like to thank uh, 
this for starting out with the land acknowledgement uh, uh, at the beginning, where we uh, point out that we are on stolen land from various native tribes. Uh, and we are living in a settler colonial state, and it's our responsibility to make up for that and fight for, for, fight for self-determination of all people, and in particular, indigenous people. With that being said, I'm going to quote Dennis Banks of the Ojibwe Nation and the founder of the American Indian Movement uh, and the corresponding Red Power Movement from the 70s. And everyone in this room should look up to Dennis Banks. He said, what is happening to Palestinians is what we went through during the last century. Unfortunately, it is the same people backing it. It is the U.S. government which funnels money to Israel and then it goes to hurt the Palestinian people. Rebecca Miles of the Nez Pierce Nation says when it comes to Palestinian issues, there is no difference. It is another indigenous group of people being kept from their own waterways, resources, and ways of life. This is exactly like the United States coming in and making all these treaties that have been broken within months. And it's important to remember, yeah, we also live in a settler colonial state. It's not about pointing out Israel or singling them out. We live in a settler colonial state. The person who said, should we divest from all those other companies? Yeah, we should, absolutely. And if you want to hear about other uh, organizations that are being funded by Champagne groups, come out to the Douglas uh, Park Branch Library this Saturday at 2 p.m. where Answer Coalition, the Act on to Stop Warning and Racism, will be talking about other military funding from Champagne, not just ones in Israel. And it's it, we, we need to show solidarity with indigenous people and opposition to war and corporate greed. And there's a couple inaccuracies and lies that came out tonight that I wanted to point them out. People were saying, why not uh, mention Hamas or North Korea? Uh, I would really like to see what investments UIUC has in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea or which Maybe they do. I don't know, but I doubt it. Um, people say South Africa is a bad metaphor. You can't compare this, uh, Palestine and South Africa. Uh, but the diplomat from South Africa said Israel is the only state in the world that can be called an apartheid state. We remain deeply concerned at the denial of the right of self-determination to the Palestinian people in the absence of which no other human right can be exercised or enjoyed. People said uh, South Africa was different because they never fought back. Okay, you need to read some speeches by uh, Winnie Mandela, Nelson Mandela's first wife. Even though there was violence in the South African Revolution, that doesn't diminish my support of it one iota. As Franz Fanon said, for the colonized subject, objectivity is always directed against him. I am 100% pro self-determination of indigenous people. And finally, Alan touched this, on this a little bit, but there is a narrative that uh, Jewish people who speak out against Zionism in Israel are uh, self-hating Jews or not real Jews, and, and that the rest of the group of oh, this over there are anti-Semitic. Um, I want to point out that Israel, throughout its history, has been one of the biggest collaborators with anti-Semitism. Theodore Herzl, the father of Zionism, went to the Russian uh, interior minister who organized lynchings and burnings of Jewish people. And this, this, this minister said, you don't, have to, you don't have to convince me of Zionism, I'm a convert. He just wanted all the Jews out of Russia. The Jewish uh, Zionist, uh, Zionist groups give awards to Winston Churchill, who supported Israel in his article called Send the Jews to Israel, the terroristic ones would take over the world. And Zionist groups are still honoring Winston Churchill. The Israeli government is sending arms to right-wing militias in Ukraine that wear swastikas. Okay, it's not about anti-Semitism. It's about settler colonialism, imperialism. And I just want to remind everyone about that land acknowledgement. They should not be empty words. We need to fight for indigenous rights of people in this country, in Canada, in Central America, in the Philippines, in Brazil, and in Palestine. And if we don't, we should just throw that land acknowledgement in the trash because it doesn't mean a goddamn thing without it. Abigail 
Hello, my name is Abby Pistra, and I'm the president of Students for Environmental Concerns, which is the largest and oldest environmental group on this campus. And I will be speaking on behalf of my RSO tonight. SCCS is an organization deeply rooted in social justice, and it supports the liberation of all oppressed people. We believe in equality and the upholding of human rights. And on this basis, as a group, we support the resolution that has been introduced. I think it is important to note before I say anything further that there, um, the words Zionism, Judaism, one and two state solutions, BDS, and anything about the Jewish religion are completely absent from this resolution. This is not about the existence of Israel. This is about the countless human rights violations that they have committed and continue to commit against Palestinian people. In the past, UIUC student activists put pressure on the university to divest from companies profiting off the apartheid in South Africa, and they succeeded in their fight. Why is this different? If the words Israel and Palestine were not included in this resolution, this would not be a controversial resolution. We would not be here if those two words were not included. If the words Israel and Palestine were not included, senators would not be afraid to vote on this resolution. And let me add that shaming and threatening to shame senators for voting yes is inappropriate and it's a, um, it's a scare tactic and it's extremely inappropriate. If we look at this as a human rights issue, and only a human rights issue, the answer would be clear. We shouldn't turn a blind eye to blatant human rights violation, and as a university, we, sure, we certainly should not be investing in companies that benefit from these violations. This has nothing to do with anti-Semitism. This is about ethics. This is about standing in solidarity with a group of people and saying, we will no longer financially support your oppressors. In regards to, I'm gonna, I was gonna end there, but I have a few, couple extra things to say. Um, in regards to a statement made by a fellow student, we can invest in progress. With the money, we divest from campaigns that fund human rights violations. And also, um, going back to the first resolution, one thing that SJP made clear was that they criticized the chancellor for not addressing things like the swastikas found on campus, as well as hate speech around campus, including Holocaust deniers on the quad. Um, but one of the previous speakers has been seen multiple times holding a sign that says hate speech is free speech. So I don't know how that um, aligns with what has been said tonight. Um, but yeah, that's what I have to say. So thank you very much for listening. Hello, my name is Ben Zabel. Uh, I'm the current president of the Hamad Center for Jewish Life on campus, but uh, I'm here tonight as a Jewish student, not from St. Hamad. As a registered organization, the ISG must follow the student code. The student code states the following under Article 2, Section 2 304, sanctions of registered organizations. A. A registered organization and or Registered student organization may be sanctioned for one or more of the following causes. One, knowingly sponsoring, urging, or engaging in actions by individuals or organizations that violate university rules or regulations, including this kind. Two, knowingly sponsoring, urging, or engaging in actions that substantially disrupt or interfere with the normal operation of the university or with the lawful activities of organizations or individuals authorized to use university facilities. Under this, the ISG is, quote, engaging in actions by individuals or organizations that violate university rules or regulations, end quote. 
Under Article 2, Section 2-302, Preamble, it states, Commitment of the university to the most fundamental principles of academic freedom, quality of opportunity, and human dignity requires that decisions involving students and employees be based on individual merit and be free from invidious discrimination in all its forms, whether or not specifically prohibited by law. I'll repeat that. Be free from invidious discrimination in all its forms, whether or not specifically prohibited by law. The form of language seen in the resolution is a direct attack on Israel and the Jewish people. It affects on our campus and around the world. Both the resolution from last semester defining anti-Semitism without input, without Jewish input, as well as tonight's resolution show a pattern of strong discrimination towards Jewish students on this campus. Additionally, ISG is, quote, substantially disrupting the normal operation of the university, end quote. When hundreds of Jewish students are leaving their regular studies for hours to fight anti-Semitism, they are substantially losing precious time from their education. When students have to spend countless nights working until 3 in the morning to work on issues such as yes tonight and the anti-Semitism resolution from last semester, mental well-being of individuals is significantly diminished. The ISG is directly negatively impacting the climate of our campus by creating a space where Jewish students are no longer comfortable to wear kippos on our heads. This will create a much stronger divide among students on campus, which will lead and already has alluded to a toxic environment for student, Jewish students. If this resolution is passed, it will create mental stability of all pro-Israel and Jewish students on campus. This resolution also disrupts the normal financial operations of the university by having them divest from companies that the governing board has chosen to invest in. I am deeply saddened by the thought that a resolution like this could pass. I am saddened that a student government board whose stated mission is to, quote, advance the collective interest in safeguarding the rights of the students to maintain the quality of life, education, employment, research, and services at the institution, and provide for the awareness and general welfare of the campus and community, end quote, has chosen by their actions this year, school year to pass resolutions that only do not reflect the voices of all the students and has actively worked to silence the Jewish voice on campus, but is actively engaging in a pattern of activities that create a toxic living and learning environment for Jewish students. Passing this resolution tonight not only encourages hatred toward me and people like me, but makes me uncomfortable to be a student and a Jew on our campus. I want to ask, I want you to ask yourself, if this resolution passes tonight, could there be legal action taken? Would this resolution result in the revocation of the Illinois student government's registered organization status and lose all the funding from the university? Students will not sign up for Thank you.
<laughs> Home demolitions, denying Palestinians freedom of movement and religious freedom, murder of Palestinian civilians. These are the things Elbit, North Greenwood, and Raytheon facilitate profit from. So we decided to do something about it. We talked to students about what their tuition dollars were funding and built support for more socially responsible investing. Tonight we have a chance to take a huge step forward towards socially responsible investing in our university. By voting yes on this resolution, you're telling the administration that we don't want our tuition dollars funding violence, and you're showing support for an effort that educates students about human rights issues in the U.S. and Palestine and around the world. So please vote yes. <laughs> Is this speaker present? No. Drake Materi. At this time, is there any further public comment? Uh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. I apologize. Nina Rob wow. can complete her three minutes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 That is that's a that's a higher level than that. That's just wow. Wow, wow. Well, thank you for welcoming me. Welcoming me back to the podium is allowing me to finish my um, what I'm saying. But I heard it. You guys heard it. Probably one of you guys said it, and all of you guys heard it. But I was called a Nazi right in front of your eyes. While the authors of this bill clapped in support of the statement. No, no, no. I'm sorry, but if that is not anti-Semitic, I don't know what is. You don't have to tell me what genocide is. What is the true genocide is when the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Hajj Amin al-Husseini, stood side by side next to Hitler to plan the final step to wipe the Jews off the face of the earth. Look it up on Google, please. But unlike my slaughtered family, whose ashes lay in Auschwitz, we, the Jewish people, are finally free. We, the Jewish people, can defend ourselves. And this time, we will not stand by as our people, again, are threatened with slaughter by Hamas and their national SJP supporters, as well as all of their hostile nations. Thank God that our university invests in these companies that protects Israel against these hostile, our hostile neighbors. Continue. Continue. The people of Israel live and will not be apologetic for our right to exist and prosper in the Jewish state. Thank you. Yeah. There are 32 minutes left in public comment. Thank you all for coming here. I understand that this is a very big issue for you, and the fact that you have taken the time out of your day to be here it just shows how committed you are to whatever side you are on for this position. Now, I'm going to go on record and say I support divestment. I support removing funds from companies that act in countries that enable human rights violations. In fact, I think we need to go a step further after this and completely remove any trace of products that emanate from these countries to show that we are completely against these human rights violations. For example, uh, I count about uh, 39 laptops in front of you, and I am willing to bet that the vast majority of those laptops are fitted with an Intel chip. 
And Intel is primarily based in Israel, so I suggest we remove all laptops and primarily all, in fact, all computers from this university because I think the vast majority of computers on this university are also founded in Israel. Uh, I believe most of you have a cell phone on you. The cell phone was co-created in Israel, so I think I suggest we remove all forms of portable communication, as a matter of fact. Now, I think, I, I, no, I'm not going to stop there. I think that, okay, fine, technology is going to rule us one day, better to get rid of it now. But, as you know, there's a lot of mathematical theories, such as the Poincaré conjecture, the Fermat's last theorem, in fact. Well, those are all based on Zermelo Frankel's set theory, and Abraham Frankel was an Israeli, so therefore I suggest we completely strike mathematics from this university as well. So, what's that? Is that a lot of your STEM majors you don't like that? Well, then listen to me close. <laughs> Israel is full of innocent people, both Israelis and Palestinians, that do not want to see war on their land anymore. In fact, I'm willing to bet that most Israelis are themselves survivors of the Holocaust, the event aimed at exterminating six million Jews, and perhaps many more around the world. The very event that killed 12 of my grandfather's 14 siblings, and is the reason that I wear this hat on my head and not simply the yarmulke underneath. So, I implore you, consider the effects of this resolution. And for those of you saying that Israel is not mentioned anywhere, I can see in the second to last paragraph on the right that it primarily lists Palestinian struggles. So, I'm going to say that this is definitely a resolution condemning Israel. Israel is the only country that has one of the only countries I'm sorry, that actually provided support to Palestinians in their time of need. And fine, if you want to equate Netanyahu to Israel, let me equate Hamas to Palestine. Hamas uses its civilians, its hospitals, its schools, its human shields. And when the Israeli Air Force tries to intercept those attacks as an act of self-defense, the world views them in condemnation, and I will not stand for it anymore. Thank you. <laughs> Seeing no objection, the motion for public comment has now ended. We will now turn to our report. We will now be moving on to officer announcements. Are there any officers who would like to give their announcements? President Priscilla. Good evening, uh, my name is Carmen Salas, I uh, have the pleasure of serving as student government president. Um, first of all, thank you all, every single one of you, for being here. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, we are nothing without the input and voice of students. We appreciate you coming, we appreciate you speaking, we appreciate you just listening. I hope everyone will continue to focus on their personal wellness um, these few weeks, and uh, remember to practice self-care as well. Um, now I'll offer a few brief announcements on uh, what I've been up to um, recently. Uh, apologies if my voice is a little cracky. I've been sick the past week. But um, recently I've been discussing the Green Bandana Project uh, with the ABTS liaison, Colette Lawson, which is a mental health initiative, which hopefully everyone will be hearing about soon. Um, in addition, uh, transportation fee. Um, on the ballot this March um, in an effort to save students money. And we'll be sharing more with the Committee on Campus Affairs and at a later date. Um, all of you come, came here today to uh, let us know what you're thinking um, and to you know, try and sway some of the senators here. Well, um, you can be a senator. Um, you can run. Uh, you can have my job. You can do tons of stuff. Um, Campus student elections are coming up. Um, if you go to the campus student elections website right now, um, you can apply and run and get on the ballot. Um, please do. Um, please vote. Um, it's part of the process of being a student at this university, and I would really encourage it for everyone here. All that information is available on the campus elections website. Also, 
Um, we're going to be uh, putting out applications for the Teaching Excellence Awards. Basically, if you've had a really phenomenal teacher, instructor, professor, teaching assistant, graduate assistant, um, you can nominate them to get a Teaching Excellence Award. Um, keep an eye out on our social media and you'll see that very soon. In addition, you will also see applications for campus committees, um, a lot of larger campus advisory committees, um, which you can apply for. Keep an eye out on our social media, keep an eye out on our website, and you will see all of that soon. Also, the Illinois Board of Higher Education Student Advisory Committee meeting is this weekend. It's virtual now. Um, I'll be in attendance. Also, the Student Life Committee meeting is Friday, as well, which I'll be attending. I'll have updates on both of those next week. Also, the University of Illinois Police Department um, would like to inform students that it will be restarting the Community Police Academy. Um, it'll be on Thursdays, not Wednesdays this semester, so Senators, that shouldn't be too much for conflict. If you want more information, it's on the UIPD website. Contact Patrick Wade. That is all I got. Thank you. Woo! Are there any further officers who'd like to make an announcement? Seeing none, we'll move into member comment. Members who'd like to make comment, please line up at the front and please refrain from speaking about items that are on the agenda elsewhere. Hey everybody, um, I just wanted to let everyone know that the uh, Illinois Religious Action Center is, has uh, kicked off their campaign to reduce mass incarceration and fight for human rights uh, through legislation in the state of Illinois. And uh, I would uh, like to encourage everyone here, both ISG members and non-members, to attend a live stream of the campaign kickoff on uh, Wednesday, February 26th at 7.30 at the below. Um, I know that senators will probably be at a meeting near the start of that event, but hopefully, you know, it won't be as long. As um, other than that, I also wanted to say that the um, ISG member voter registration competition ends on Friday, so turning those forms in the student government complex, maybe you uh, might win a Starbucks gift card. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Oh, that's loud. I'm not used to this. Okay. Hi. So, um, to serve more than just the general body in here, my name is Sita. I am the director of ISG Central Cell Prevention Department. We have a lot of great things coming up for Women's History Month in March, and a lot more great things coming up for April, which is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. If anybody is interested in these issues in the room and wants to get involved, come see me. Um, I know we have a few senators today who are just sworn in. Welcome. I love you already. Um, <laughs> come join my department. Um, other than that, um, some stuff that I've been working on with the new LGBT advocacy task force is um, we're going to have a referendum question that's going to come up in Senate next week. We're working on allowing trans students to have the name that they go by on their diplomas instead of their legal names and learning.
they call us part-time employees, although it's very difficult for us to find another employment both during the year and during the summer. We are aiming to make our situation swimble and to make academia viable for everybody. Our first bargaining session is on Monday in the Lewis Faculty Center in rooms 208 and 210. Please come to show support and show, uh, show support and solidarity. Let's pack the room and show the administration that graduate students and education are for all. Seeing none, we'll now proceed into elections and nominations. The, the committee, the chair on the Committee on Public Relations is a position that is open for nominations. At this time, are there any nominations? Senator Ayala, Speaker President Boyle. Is there a second? Are there any nominations for PR chair at this time? Seeing none, we will move into nominations for the department head for Department on Student Wellness, Senator Ayala. Uh, is there a second? Uh, Senator Abu. I nominate Senator Cody Baker. Is there a second? Are there any further nominations? Seeing none, we will move into our consent agenda. Oh, oh, Just kidding. We have notices of, of appointments yeah. and removals. Wait on the there is the one notice of removal. We have a notice of appointment. You have been notified. Moving on to our consent agenda, the items on the consent agenda are stand in the pre-packet. Is there any longer there? Seeing no rejections to the consent agenda, all items on the consent He's just been sitting there too, he doesn't think. Pretty honest these days. Okay, 10 minute recess. Center until uh, as long as supplies last. And I'd like to thank Senator Alexis Paris Chica for working with me on that event. Additionally, I'd like to welcome Senator Griffin as the new UC Senate Senate Executive Committee representative. Congratulations on your election. Additionally, the Chair of the Committee on Public Relations and the Director of the Department on Student Wellness have both resigned this week in uh, because of extracurricular conflict and marriage. So tonight we will be nominating um, members of the ISG who wish to run for these positions. Tonight there will only be nominations. Elections will take place next week. Uh, additionally, the Menstrual Hunter Progress Task Force is up on the floor tonight on the consent agenda. So let either myself or Senator Cody Bainbridge know if you are interested in taking, uh, being a part of the work in the Menstrual Progress Task Force. That's just because uh, Finally, well, today I'd like to preface this meeting by saying oh, that. But they vote 16 to 20 to 1, this motion fails. At this time, are there any further motions? There has been a motion to extend the total amount of time for public comment by 30 minutes. Is there a second? Are there any objections? Seeing none, this time will be extended by another 30 minutes. Uh, Molly Kramer, do you have a comment? Hi, my name is Molly Kramer, and I'm a sophomore studying psychology and political science. I am also the president of Alina Hilla, the Jewish Cultural House on campus. Alina Hilla was founded 97 years ago because Jews need a space free from the anti Semitism they faced on campus. And sadly, we are still serving that purpose today. In my role as a leader within the Jewish community, I feel a strong responsibility for the safety, security, and comfort for the UIUC Jewish students. In my two years on campus, I signed this session three times now, uh, as the mostly non-Jewish student senate has discussed and debated resolutions that have a profound impact on 
the well-being of Jewish students without consulting that community. When Jewish voices are silenced, anti-Semitic voices feel as if they are, it is acceptable to get louder. Last week, as this bill was being proposed to by one of the authors, she openly perpetuated the stereotype that Jews have money that they abuse in order to control policy on this campus. Throughout history, that stereotype has been used by political leaders as a reason to exile or kill Jewish people. In a room just down the hall, that stereotype was met with applause by you. At that moment, and in many other moments within my time at UIUC, I was scared to be a Jew. I'm scared right now. Being Jewish to me means that I'm part of a rich culture and a religion that shaped me into the person I am today. Being pro-Israel to me means that I see Israel for what it is, a, a country that is complicated with its past and present. Please. If you don't know how to explain the Israeli-Palestinian conflict with nuance from both sides, don't pick a side. If you can't tell me why it's complicated, why the land's disputed, how both sides have suffered, how both sides are scared, if you have only asked one person questions about it, or only read one news source, please don't use your power to try to fix a problem that you don't understand. Both Palestinian and Israeli students exist on this campus. Both don't want to be scared or silenced. Both want to stand up for human rights, but this isn't the way to do it. All over the world, there are people suffering from tyranny and oppression. So why are we calling out one country 11 different times in this revolution when other countries are only mentioned once or not at all? Why is Israel being held to a higher standard? I urge each of you to look beyond the headlines and misleading stories to try and make this conflict far more simple than it actually is. Instead, use your position as members of the state government to stand up for all students. I implore you, please vote no on this resolution. Thank you. Is the speaker present? Yes, Minutes. My name is Orly. I stand before you as a student of this university, not supported by any international movement. These are my words and my thoughts. 690. 690 rockets were indiscriminately shot into civilian population centers in Israel in May of last year over the course of three days. 240 of those were intercepted by the Iron Dome Missile Defense System. I was on a bus at the time in the south of Israel driving back to my apartment when several of the rockets were intercepted. I looked out the window and saw with my own eyes the Iron Dome Defense System intercepting rockets literally above my head, heading right for me. My cousin Rosa and Moshe, who are in their 70s, live in a city inside of Israel called Seirot. They're running with 12 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve for their lives all the time. Had the Iron Dome not been working, they would not have any sense of security, and I would not be standing here today. So I ask you all sitting here, why are other human rights more important than mine? More important than Rosa's, more important than Moshe's. I'm asking why you're not concerned about our human rights, our safety. By accepting this bill to pass, we're saying that my human rights to peacefully ride on a bus do not matter to you. The Iron Dome was manufactured using some technology provided by Raytheon, one of the companies on the list in this resolution. The Iron Dome is a system designed to intercept and destroy short-range rockets and artillery shells fired into civilian population centers in Israel. In other words, it is used to protect and save innocent lives. When you think 690, your mind doesn't even comprehend how much that is. These paper clips, these represent 690 rockets during that individual barrage that have killed thousands of people, including myself. Without Raytheon, all of these rockets would have potentially fallen onto civilian homes and killed scores of innocent people. So I ask again, why are you all sitting there not concerned about their human rights? I do not understand why you, the, you, the senators, have put forth such an anti-Israel resolution. 
After doing some research on why this resolution singles out these companies among thousands of companies that the university does business with, I learned that what these companies really have in common is that they are all listed on the BDS movement's um, official website as companies targeted by BDS to divest them as well. While some may not see it as a direct correlation with the BDS playbook, it is not a coincidence that Israel is mentioned almost exclusively and that all three companies happen to be on the BDS page for divestment. I want to bring to your attention that the United States House of Congress, the United States Congress House of Representatives, with overwhelming support, passed House Resolution 246 that states, quote, contrast to protest movements that have sought racial justice and social change, the global BDS movement targeting Israel is not about promoting coexistence, civil rights, and political reconciliation, but about questioning and undermining the very legitimacy of the country and its people. It also states that BDS ultimately leads to, quote, intimidation and harassment of the Jewish student and others who support Israel. So I ask again, why are you singling out Israel in this resolution? Is that the kind of climate you, the senators of ISG, are trying to create? One of fear and intimidation? One where I know no longer to wear a, a star of David around my neck and my fellow peers will not feel comfortable wearing a yarmulke on their head? I do not understand how the iron, I do not understand how the iron drum that very well may have saved my life is in some way infringing on the quote collective interest in safeguarding the rights of the students and providing for the awareness and general welfare of the campus and community. Where are the rights of the Jewish and non-Jewish students who support Israel? Do we not deserve to have a home here on this campus? If this was really about human rights violations, you would look at other human rights abusers. Where are they in this resolution? You have one minute remaining. So I ask again, why are you singling out Israel? I hope you will make the decision to vote against this resolution and take a serious look at what you are really saying. I hope that my student government will take into account my rights as well as others. That you will not, that you will not allow Jewish and non-Jewish students who support Israel to be intimidated and harassed on this campus. Please consider me and my community's safety. Please, vote no. Good evening. My name is Brad Larson, and I'm here to study information systems. I'm president of our university's Tamil chapter, which is an organization that does consulting projects for Israeli startups. I'm here to state that I support divestment. I am proud that ISG has a history of divesting from South African apartheid. This is a very important cause. Human rights is an important cause, too. I'm sure many of you signed on this resolution because you want to support human rights around the world. I agree with you. If human rights were all this was about, I too would support it, just like I support divestment in other cases. But I do not support this divestment resolution. While the authors of the resolution may state that this is not singling out one country or one people, this resolution is part of the international boycott, divestment, and sanction movement. That denies the state of Israel's right to exist and the Jewish people's right to self determination. Divestment is one of the pillars of BDS, along with boycotts and sanctions. The BDS movement's website states quote, Divestment campaigns urge banks, local councils, churches, pension funds, and universities to withdraw investments from the state of Israel and all Israeli and international companies that sustain Israeli apartheid. End quote. <coughs> How do I know that this is BDS? Because Israel, Palestine, and the West Bank or Gaza are mentioned in the resolution 16 times. Yemen, China, Russia, and others are mentioned once. What about some of the other nations that Amnesty International lists as some of the world's worst human rights violators, like Syria, Myanmar, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela? Nothing. You may have sponsored this resolution with good intentions, but I beg you to see this for what it is. This resolution does single out the country and the people. Please withdraw your sponsorship and vote down. Thank you. The next speaker is Ed Lingen.
Good evening. I'm Keshav Adhyay. I'm pursuing engineering physics. And as you can probably tell by my name and my accent, I'm an Indian. Why do I mention that? Because I'm looking right now at a student body which for the most part is both privileged and localized. A lot of you are from the Illinois, Chicago region, US, or other rather comfortable places in many regards. And those of you who aren't being included often come from the upper class of society in other nations. A position which get, allows us both mobility and safety. That isn't always the case. I'm going to, for the purpose of this discussion, assume, assume that despite all probabilistic occurrences which are begging belief, that this is a genuine resolution, one discussing human rights abuses and not targeting the only Jewish state. So, this is my perspective as an Indian. When I was growing up in India, the biggest festive season is Diwali. You'll see traffic jams, you'll have free art rushes because everyone's gifting gifts to everyone they know. All the markets are full. You'll have thousands and thousands of people in every single market. They're from events, it's commercial, it's a festive season where the economy just spikes like a dental function. And people wear vibrant colors and they're very happy. In 2005, we had something called the serial bombings in Delhi. We had multiple markets, one after another, go up in smoke, and multiple bombs explode in a very short period of time. Very quickly, terrorist groups claimed credit and in all their pride gloated about killing, maiming, and otherwise harming my citizens. That's not the only occurrence. In 2008, we had 20 to 30 dead and about 130 injured in another series of bomb blasts. This one was a bit closer to home. Why? Because it is in a market walking distance from my house. My family shops there every week, even now. In fact, the locations targeted were commonly used, frequented, almost exclusively by high schoolers and students of colleges. Perhaps this is news to you. I hope it is. Because if it isn't, and this is the resolution that you're sponsoring, I really doubt what your moral character is. So here's what I'm telling you. There are parts of the world which aren't Naperville, which aren't Champagne, which aren't even Abana, and they actually require security. Like today, when we go to markets in India, we have metal detectors. And you know why I say that? Because we had a previous discussion last week where a student kept on mentioning how it's a human rights abuse for us to use information technology to keep track of people and protect our citizens. I'll give you an example. I've been advised not to, but I think you guys should understand it. In the bombs which were used, we had something like ammonium nitrate, NH4NO3, common fertilizer. You use NH4NO3, you take a pressure cooker or a pipe, and you take some screws, like you know, construction side ones. You put them together, and a first year ACE student in the school could probably make a bomb which would take out 20 to 30 of you in the blink of an eye. That's what you do. You do not fight terrorism by trying to ban guns or just controlling explosives in the common time. In the modern world, what we have, the greatest potential barrier between you dying and not dying isn't because someone cannot get access to a truck, because you cannot make a bomb. It is because we as humans have the moral character, the incentives, and the stability to value human life. That is not the equilibrium condition for human history. Throughout human history, we see people with bronze swords, destroyed people with iron swords. Regions like the Balkans fall with Greece, with Ottomans, with all sorts of problems, one after another, and even today you have regions like Kosovo, where you see warfare. I do not like to say this, but unfortunately the region being discussed is one such region. And perhaps closer to home, my city was like that a while back. We've had attacks on the parliament. If there are those of you from Mumbai, you've had attacks you have even in Mumbai. Many. So, why am I discussing this? Because I'm hoping that with this information, you will understand that divesting right now from things which allow you to keep track of terrorist suspects is like divesting from CD scans and MRIs when you have a hospital next door. And also, as a student in the College of Engineering, I grew up respecting Feynman, Fermi, Einstein, Oppenheimer, Teller, Newton, Euler, Aristotle. Every single one of them was involved in defense of their nations. To give you a perspective, the Defense Department, DOD, has about $13 billion in annual scientific and technological research. $2.2 billion of these are pure fundamental physics. 
quantum entanglement, quantum gravity, things which define the future. And half of that is in universities. So let me tell you what happens. You guys decide to act in this manner. FPGAs for drone control, quantum communication, hypersonic, hypersonic control systems, all of that has expired. Boats. So, JPL yeah, boats and engineering, which puts Ilma in the map. What about the start? We currently have 15 minutes left in public comment. Yeah. Motion to uh, extend time. Five hours. Half an hour. 60 minutes. 60 minutes. 60 minutes. <laughs> Are there any objections? Seeing none, the time will be extended. <laughs> Um, I'm just about to read out a couple of the quotes from some of the leaders of the BDS community. This is by Hani Dawad, the national coordinator. Israel is the oppressor, not the settlements. This is by Rafiq Zayda. BDS pertains to the entirety of Palestine, not only Gaza and the West Bank. This is Jeremiah Lavar. Any call for a boycott, divestment, or sanctions for whatever motive will be rightly perceived by the pro-Israel crowd as a threat, even an existential one. This is by Ahmed Moore, the, one of another leader. BDS does lead in the end of the Jewish state. This is Assad Abu Khalil. The real aim of BDS is to bring down the state of Israel. And then this is David Duke, the Grand Wizard of the KKK. May our hearts fill up with boycott, divestment, and sanctions against Israel. These are just some of the quotes uh, by creators and leaders of the BDS movement. This resolution has nothing to do with creating a better life for Palestinians in Palestine. It does have everything to do with ending Israel. These are their words. You are currently voting on, a, on if a country should uh, even exist. And if you vote yes to this resolution, then you're supporting a racist, anti-Semitic movement that the far right, including the KKK, fully part of, uh, full part, they, they very much support it. Remember, you're the company you keep. Vote no to this anti Semitic uh, anti resolution. Thank you so much for coming out. The next speaker is Good evening, friends, my Jewish family, allies, the entire University of Illinois community. My name is Michael Boker. I'm a senior in the College of LAS, majoring in political science. Unfortunately, we don't do that. <laughs> if political science has taught me anything as a major, it's to understand what you're doing at all times. It's to understand what's going on around you and to know the world around you. As my good friend Dylan Janzak, by the way, it's Janzak, Jewish name, hard to pronounce, pointed out, here's some of the supporters of BDS. David Duke, I think he's a Klansman. He supports BDS. <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn, a known anti-Semite. In flame. Did I just hear a woo for, for Jeremy Corbyn? <laughs> okay, so a known anti-Semite Semite who's had public statements against Jews in Britain has just been moved by numerous members of SJP. The fact that he noted in the minutes, I appreciate it. Levi Kleinitz, you can have your chance to speak. I'm speaking right now. Louis Farrakhan, a known, a known anti-Semite who preaches... Please, please listen to the president, Stu John. Louis Farrakhan, a known anti-Semite who preaches against Jews around America. 
is a supporter of BDS. You're aligning yourself with these people. Is the Illinois, Illinois student government a supporter of BDS? Are you willing to align yourself with these despicable characters in the international community? My first experience with Israel on this campus was not supporting it in any way. My freshman year in the spring semester, 2017, I was walking across campus on the Jewish high holiday of Passover, Pesach. I was wearing a kippah as I'd never done before in my life in public because I felt proud to be a Jew. I felt proud to walk across campus and show that I stand with my ancestors thousands of years and my family who experienced Soviet, communist, and Nazi persecution for who they were. Shouldn't, I, I shouldn't experience that on the, on, on the University of Illinois campus, and I was proud to wear a kippah in public. It happened to be, I doubt as a coincidence, that the Students for Justice in Palestine chapter here was hosting their annual apartheid wall week on the main quad. As I was walking by, not aware of anything, at this time I was still unaware of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, I was jeered outright, simply because I was a visible Jew. This year, the semester, I've taken it upon myself to be a visible Jew at all times, and wear a kippah at all times. And I still get jeers, and I still get looks from students that were the authors of this resolution. If you senators sitting here today are willing to put your names down on a vote to pass this resolution, you're absolutely outright, no question, undoubtedly, clearly sending a message to the Jewish students on this campus the thousands of Jewish students on this campus that they are not included in the University of Illinois. There is no coincidence that Jewish students are linked with Israel and that BDS is anti-Semitic. It emboldens anti-Semites on this campus to do what was done to me my freshman year. What hampered my own expression of my identity my freshman year. It's unacceptable for senators to stand and support something which silences those hoping to express their identity. One of the main goals of the Illinois student government is to enhance or develop structures committed to diversity and unfortunately, that's not the case. If the main concern of this body is to ensure the rights and abilities of students at this university, why is it alienating thousands of students who in the past two years, three years, have voted clearly destroying the BDS from passing? So you can enforce your subjective morality, anti-Semitic legislation, your time has on a group expired. of students destroys your time has Um, I don't have something prepared. I do want to get something off my chest, though. Sorry, is your name not Charlie Eckert? Yeah, come, come, come speak, Charlie. <laughs> so that was actually my. You have friend. four minutes and 50 seconds remaining. Why the peanut gallery? So, like, we just didn't have anything prepared. Um, it's kind of like unexpected, but what I will say is that all the speakers that came before me speak the truth. I'm all for 
human rights and this resolution is not. So vote no because if you don't, you're making it clear that you stand against the thousands of Jewish students on this campus. That's all I got for you. The next speaker is Aaron Melman. Good evening to all of you. My name is Aaron Merlin, and I'm a chemical engineering student on campus. But more importantly, I'm a concerned Jewish student who's here to express my grievances. Now the data shows that BDS is undoubtedly linked to anti-Semitic behavior and the harassment of pro-Israel students on college campuses. The AMFA Initiative, a, pro, or a nonprofit organization that documents anti-Semitic events, stated that anti-Semitic events were 86 percent of them were linked to BDS on college campuses. Now imagine that. 86% of anti-Semitic events on college campuses were linked to BDS. This resolution not only contributes to a movement that is effectively calling for the elimination of the only Jewish state on the planet, but it is a violation of Jewish self-determination and an ultimate damage to the Palestinian cause. But it isn't just us as Jews who oppose this movement. It's the entire community of nations. BDS has been condemned by our current administration, the Obama administration, the entire United States Congress, as well as the governments of Canada, France, Great Britain, Germany, Spain, the Netherlands, and Australia, as well as the presidents of over 300 university campuses. Now let me ask you, if this is the friendly resolution that its writers are saying that it is, where is the global support? It is non-existent. In addition to the world community being unified against BDS, I'd like to focus on this campus. Every single major Jewish entity on this campus is against this resolution as it targets Jewish and pro-Israel students. That is, Illini Hillel, Chabad, Jeff, along with the five Jewish Greek houses. These entities represent thousands of Jewish students on this campus and are all unified in condemning this resolution because of its anti-Semitic nature. I'd like to finish by saying that when a minority group tells you that something is hateful towards them, that something targets them, and that something makes them feel unsafe on this campus, it is your job as their elected representatives to listen. It is not your job to ignore them. This Senate has failed our community one time in the fall, and it even tried to silence us today but I'm calling on this Senate to vote no on this resolution. You failed this community before, and we are giving you the chance as the Jewish community to redeem yourselves. Vote no on divestment. Thank you. I'm Madeline Hubbard. I'm a senior studying journalism here. And for parts of my freshman, sophomore, and junior year, I was in student government. So I see some familiar faces, some new faces. Um, today was actually scheduled to be in an LSAT prep course live online. And I was planning on leaving the course for five minutes just so I could come and talk to you guys. But I honestly felt physically sick about this re resolution, and I had to leave the prep course so I could speak to you all. I couldn't focus. I realized it wasn't productive, so I came here. I am the Orthodox Union intern on campus. The Orthodox Union is one of the largest Jewish organizations in the United States. My goal is to get more Jewish students at the University of Illinois and to educate current Jewish students about Judaism. So you've probably all started to tune out the Jewish students at this point. Being in student government made me really cynical, which is why I decided to not be a senator in my senior year. You probably already made up your minds, and you're probably super bored, and I'm sitting in the back and I can see how many of you are just doing homework on your computers. I'm not here to 
to shame you. I'm just stating the facts. And I'm going to be quick with my speech because of all of this. I first discovered my Jewish identity in college. I'll never forget when I first told a student about my Jewish ancestry, he said to me, Hitler should have killed you. <laughs> he tried to claim it was a joke. And then he said, oh, I'm so sorry. But comments like that aren't jokes. They spread hatred and lies and make Jewish students scared. Anti-Semitism is alive and well. This resolution, if anything, encourages anti-Semitism and doesn't prevent it. The climate brought to this campus from the resolution will discourage many students from attending the university. Many prospective students have said that this resolution alone has made them decide to not attend U of I. We're such a great school. It's a shame to see that. And it's not just Jews who are saying it. Why would an engineer want to attend the school if we say we don't want to work with companies that they want to intern at or have a job at someday? As student senator, I remember sitting in your spots week after week and wishing like, oh, I wish I could make a big difference and not just do votes on hot chocolate or whatever, you know. Um, and I can tell you that voting yes on this resolution literally does nothing positive to improve the campus community. The student body already spoke against BDS twice and they have said no. My colleagues have all spoken as to why this is clearly an anti-Semitic bill that supports BDS. And if you support this resolution, you are voting against the student who you are supposed to represent. The Board of Trustees will ignore you. They've already said they don't support BDS. And I would appreciate it if you could stop laughing while I'm speaking, please. Quiet. Silence in the chambers, please. Well, you are contributing to an unsafe environment if you vote on yes on this. You are ruining students' relationships with these companies and internships and scholarships. But if you vote no to this resolution, you will earn the respect of millions of people, including the larger Jewish community in Chicago, the United States, and abroad. Now, remember how I said ISG made me really cynical? I beg you to make me change my mind. Make me optimistic again. Vote no to this and restore my faith as well as the faith of the Jewish community and their elected officials. You are all better than this. Vote for what is right and vote to support the Jewish community by voting now. Members of the public, please refrain from having side conversations while another member of the public is speaking. The next uh, speaker is Max Shapiro. <laughs> Members of the public, please remain silent. Sure, you have five minutes. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Max and Girl. Sorry, sorry. Good looking at um, Oh, where do I start? Um, you've already heard the voices of so many concerns. Um, the role of the student government is to act as a mouthpiece for the students of this campus. That lift the voices. This is your job. To lift the voices of the people who feel silenced. Now, when you decide to lift the voices of somebody and put the other people down, that is not acceptable. Here's what it says in the first line of this resolution. The University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign's diversity statement is to enhance, develop, and maintain structures and services committed to diversity and respect spaces that allow for the support and development of specific identities and communities. Now tell me this. If you have hundreds of Jews coming out to you two times in the same year and telling them they feel hurt, disrespected, not treated fairly, can you tell me that you're actually following this resolution? Are you allowing us to develop appropriately? Now, we're trying to engage with you, and we want to. And when I served on the Student Senate, we did a lot of great stuff. We created a Get Out the Vote task force, which was great. It was something where we put our partisan differences aside, and we worked together to increase campus turnout to the highest rate in history for the 2018 midterms. Now, here's the thing. The Jews are here telling you that we feel left out of the conversation. You make the decision to vote yes on this resolution, our worst fears. How can the Jews come here and expect to be involved 
in the student government if their voices are not being listened to? How can a Jewish freshman come next semester hearing that the student government two times when hundreds of Jews showed up would not listen to the voices of the Jews? How is that possible? So I guess going forward, what is most important is that we open the space for dialogue. No, I'm not saying that I don't care about the other side, and I think hey, how that takeaway would be very wrong. But I'm saying that when you put forward a resolution, bring it to committee, and shut down the debate in the committee when the Jews try and raise their voices and say something is wrong here, you're not listening to us. We just want a seat at the table. So do what you want. Take the bill out, rewrite it, just include us. Let us speak. We just want to be heard. So before you do something that you cannot take back, please read the same book. I come to you today because you are being fooled. SJP is misrepresenting my homeland, my people, the land to which my grandfather left his five siblings and parents to pursue his American dream. He came to this country with nothing, nada. He was robbed at gunpoint and still managed to start a business in which he bought his parents a home in Israel because that's the Middle Eastern mentality. When you get knocked down, you find a way to get back up and fight. And oh yeah, let me take you back to why they ended up in Israel in the first place. My family came from Persia, present-day Iran. They were forced out of their homes because they were Jewish. Just because they were Jewish, for no other reason. Few Jews remained and had to hide their identities to survive to this day. Currently, Jews cannot even hold political positions in Iran. There's still a minority of Jews being oppressed today in Iran. Where is the call to action on their human rights being violated? It's not. And, this, and the facts stand for themselves. This resolution is BDS. And this campaign is part of the international boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement. This is BDS. Please remove your name as a sponsor from this resolution and reject BDS as a whole. Thank you. <laughs> Ali Levasani. Point of information, what number of speaker are we on? We are on 24 of 43. Point of information, how much time? 52 um, minutes. Okay, thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Ali Lavasani and I'm a grad student majoring in electrical engineering here. So tonight I respectfully ask that you reject the violations of human rights in university investment resolution. This resolution describes Israel as purposefully killing Palestinian citizens in Gaza. The truth is Israel takes great effort to not harm civilians during conflict with Hamas. Hamas invests in terror tunnels to massacre Israelis rather than investing in the well-being of Palestinians. Hamas fires rockets into Israel from civilian areas to use their people as human shields when Israel retaliates. Despite what the resolution claims, it absolutely does seek to determine a political solution in which Israel allows rapid fire on its civilian population. This resolution is problematic. This resolution is misguided. Please vote no on this resolution. Thank you. Hello. You have five minutes. Thank you. My name is Elias.
Elias. Um, first of all, I'm a little sick and my voice is going, so if I need to speak up, please interrupt me. Um, so there's been a lot of talk about the abstractions on top of the bill today. Um, I want to highlight that's all that is, abstractions. If we were to read the bill, we'd find that a lot of discussions that have been going on today have nothing to do with the language and the contents and the intentions of the bill. And of course, these are important discussions, and I, encourage, and I encourage everyone to do research and form opinions for themselves if they haven't already, um, and to continue doing so even if they have already, because as we know, as scholars, as university students, history doesn't stop happening and we can't stop learning. Now, that being said, um, like I said, much of the discussion today doesn't have much to do with the actual bill. Um, very few of the groups or controversies, con controversies mentioned are uh, up for a vote today. In fact, I would hesitate to say that none of them are up for a vote today. Uh, what is up for a vote today is what's on the bill. Uh, what is legible on the bill, there is no invisible ink on the bill. I don't believe that is permitted. You'll be voting on whether or not we are okay with funding human rights abuses. Because this bill, of course, refers to every human rights abuse. That language is, in fact, in the bill. Uh, the bill pushes for divestment from all companies that commit human rights violations, and there is no invisible ink there. The companies highlighted in the bill have been found to support war crimes by the International Court of Justice and other entities, um, but of course, the bills highlighted are not the only ones. Uh, there are many, many, many more companies from across the world, many mentioned by speakers earlier, that I would love to see the university that best from. Because that's what the bill is about. The bill is about human rights, no matter who is abusing them. And if you support human rights abuses, if you support us funding human rights abuses, then that's your vote, I suppose. I want to be very clear that if you don't support human rights abuses, your vote is for this bill. Thank you. Again, please do not attempt to heckle the public commenters with your posters. You have five minutes. Hi there, my name is Raghav Akhavali. I'm the Vice President of Students Against Sexual Assault. Students Against Sexual Assault urges you to vote yes for this bill for many reasons, many amongst which are the fact that the people who support this bill and the people who are against human rights abuses are the same people who have stood in solidarity with us when we have advocated for the rights of survivors and when we have, when we have advocated for the rights of women worldwide. I want to add a second point, that we have seen a lot of tactics that eerily resemble abuse. We have seen stalking, we have seen death threats, we have seen gaslighting, we have seen intimidation tactics. Just earlier when my friend Elias was speaking, people raised signs to try to intimidate him into staying silent. This is abuse. The voices of Palestinian people, the voices of anyone who stands in solidarity with human rights are being silenced and covered over with misinformation. I want to take a moment to take off my hat as Students Against Sexual Assault's Vice President and speak only for myself. I'm going to take a moment to quote Steve Vigo, an advocate during apartheid South Africa. In South Africa, political power has always rested with white society. Not only have whites been guilty of being on the offensive, but by some skillful maneuvers, they have managed to control the responses of blacks to the provocation. Not only have they kicked the black man, but they have also told him how to react to, kick, to the kick. This is what I see. Palestinians have been kicked off their land. They've been kicked out of their communities. They've been shot at. They've been shot with missiles. They don't have $3.8 billion a year from the U.S. government. They have only their own body. And what is this but people telling the Palestinians how to react to being kicked? When genocide is committed against the Palestinian people, what is the uh, answer? Are they supposed to come peacefully to the debate? Or are they supposed to fight for what they believe in? Are they supposed to fight for the rights, for their right to exist? Let us not forget that we live in a world where the supposedly inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is behind a paywall. Let's say no more to that. Let's say that we guarantee 
the right of every single human being to live. And that means voting to divest from companies that are supporting human rights abuses. Thank you. I feel abused when you yell at me. No, I, I feel abused when you yell at me, bro. My name is Abby, and I am, uh, my voice isn't quite as loud as a lot of us. And I would like to address two important matters concerning this resolution. First, if you are not voting for this resolution because you think that it uh, does not include enough companies, I want to remind you that divestment from companies that enable human rights violations has been brought up multiple times in the past and has not gone through this university. And as a side note, many of the other companies, the startups that have been mentioned tonight, are not part of this resolution because the university has no association with them. So speaking of them does not relate to what this resolution is actually about and are relevant to what we are discussing. These things require steps to be taken. This is the first step. This is necessary to take, it is necessary to take smaller steps. So smaller steps when you take into account the lack of success in the past. By passing this resolution, it sets the precedent for more success in the future, for more companies to be considered. By not passing this resolution in order to add other companies means that divestment has not succeeded again. And if you vote for it, if only more companies were to sit on the resolution, that shows you do want to pass it. So pass it. Furthermore, I would like us all to think about the larger issue at hand with this resolution. Human rights and the violations thereof. For those who are on the fence or against this resolution, I want to ask you a question. And when you are considering your answer, please take a conscious and purposeful mental step back and refocus on objectivity. Do you think the people that these companies affect care more about politics than their own human rights? Than being physically harmed and intensely surveilled? These companies are dehumanizing and violating often marginalized groups. If the reason why you are not voting for this resolution is because you may think that it's tied to another political movement, you need to recenter yourself and ask yourself why you're in the positions of power that you are in. You're here to make this university a better place. I personally would think that not having our university be financially involved in companies that enable human rights violations will make you a better place. As a constituent of yours, I'm asking you to not play politics with people's human rights. Thank you. There's been a motion for two minute recess, and in the opinion of the chair, it is great. <laughs>